In some not so distant year, scientists attempt to send an apple forward in time within a set of less than ambitious parameters by their own standards. Off into the future it goes, at as small an interval as they can manage, comparing three blocks up and halfway inside of a wall. The conclusion from the study was that in traveling in time, you will appear where you would be in space at the time of arrival, meaning that if you were to carelessly travel through time, you would land in the cold depths of space, standing where the Earth was when you jumped, however much time later. To them, this gives yield to the evidence that time is in fact an extension of space into the fourth dimension, and that time was not any one thing ebbing and flowing as it did in the works of science fiction, but that any point in time is actually a component of a point in space. It is then theorized that every moment in time is in fact static, and we move through time like data moves through a monitor, as individual pixels flash in color and shape, giving the illusion of movement. Is movement itself the illusion of movement? Philosophers would wonder, as they always do, killing themselves both figuratively and literally over this seemingly astounding question until none were left to ponder. Bright men and women involved in this discovery, as well as the dog they knighted as their mascot of their cause, are promised to be showered in every form of currency available until their descendants ruin the world. Payers of such sums would surely be of the military persuasion, namely, yet not explicitly public, of course, and the findings would be suppressed and subdued with the utmost most brutality and caution, until a man, not privy to its importance, left a folder somewhere he shouldn't, setting at least the premise and cursory information free, like a cat slipping out when the sitter accepts pizza at the front door. The next 48 hours, information avalanches down in a white cloud of nothing as it normally does, the press dangerously misinterpreting and quoting some research that they themselves aren't even sure exists, and the whole planet erupts into a frothing, foaming at the mouth frenzy that will henceforth be referred to as the time race. The space race of yesteryears was fought in the brawn of brain, the strength and love of trust in one's country, and espionage was a treasonous and dangerous affair, to be done mostly in person and at the risk of a physical trail. In this, the year of our lord unknown, the internet is certainly imbued into most of all things living and otherwise. A man could betray his kin and country in real time, all while on the clock and making progress. Prime Nation, with their obvious lead, stripped scientists of their to-be modern standards of human rights. No communication with the outside world for fear of further leaks. Most other nations following vast laboratory complexes of hellish scale and secrecy are stabbed upwards from the Earth's crust like a knife from its core within a moment's notice, scarring the landscape with smart, twisted spires of dark glass and steel, the aesthetic of math and precision flowing from them like steam off a block of dry ice. The theoretical streets of social media are set ablaze with the class of loyalists to the ages and patriots of change committing bitter, horrible acts of yet unseen cyber violence across the vast expanses of the stoic empires of the digital communication titans. In one year, the stale rigor mortis of that known to many as daily life is burst open, setting loose the strange winged beast by the name of progress. If there is a goal in all of this, other than to win, it is certainly uncertain to any party involved. The testing begins, of course, with the replication of day zero. Many fail initially for various reasons, such as the lack of foresight in the slightest things like the construction of the facilities themselves, with some being too far underground, the results lost in the surrounding soil, and so on. Some, however, succeed immediately, a steady ratio of trials and death in tow. One nation begins to experiment with distance, another with material, and one newly established aging country with arguably questionable ethics and standards moves immediately to human trials after replication is cleared, lending each individual involved copies of the most horror one person can handle. The usual forerunners move along with their artisans grace while the second-rate nations stagger with the odd-metered waltz of a punch-drunk sailor flirting with gravity on a wax floor. The residual laboratory spires to be sold as condos in the decade to come. Third world doomsday, brain drain worldwide. Within one month, only four nations remain in the race, the rest of the world being one strike of a match shy of being completely on fire as the ever-growing madness and all of its spoils escape them. The first applications, of course, are military. They experiment first with things like trying to move objects to specific locations on purpose. This study in time travel soon becoming one of teleportation. Red Nation moves a steel ball into a park a mile away with 5% accuracy. Blue Nation moves a copper brick into a stadium five miles away with 10%. 
one, yellow, a cube, the 25. A race like two hands of the same ladder propels the superpowers that be upwards into the ever crumbling ruins of the heavens that belong to the god they killed with each tick and tack of a key on a console. Seems as the theory begin to unravel themselves as objects cast while the earth is in a certain rotation fly into or off of the planet, ruling out periods of days and continent sized land masses from participating. The nations survey and locate several prime locations for weapons platforms with maximum relevancy periods capable of deploying equipment or personnel at a moment's notice to most places on Earth. More or less in tandem, the nation scrambled to peacefully acquire them, each insisting to its people that it's best if it not lie in their enemy's hands. But the friction spurs such an intense heat that any possibility of a cold war melts away, ushering in a liquid one. Unleashing all of their fury in the name of defense against one another, the four nations quarrel scarring the face of Mother Earth with a broken bottle. Only three remain functional by the end. Nine months later, the peace, a thin and taut paper wall. They develop in secret, the spires of science becoming universities and fortresses of wisdom and intellect. The molten hot daily life of those who live to see it cools and becomes the crust in which the future walks.